All right, welcome to part two of my series. I am looking at Carl Bau's uh, television program on the Trinity Broadcast Network called Creation in the 21st Century. Um, this is a this specific episode is with Floyd Nolan Jones, Dr. Floyd Nolan Jones, and it is entitled uh, Triple Fisting Accidents. Wait, that's not right. The gaps are enormous. Anyway, so uh, it's, here it is. We're now we're, we finally are introducing um, Dr. Jones himself. Uh, Floyd, you went through a professional period of your life when you embraced evolutionary thought. Is that correct? Yes, I was an evolutionist and I taught evolution theory at the university. That's interesting because he seems to know absolutely nothing about the subject. Yes, in fact, uh, as a paleontologist, as a student, you were offered the chair of the entire department of paleontology at a major university. That's correct. University of Missouri, as I, when I last uh, noted, was a major university. Oh. All right, I, I have some serious doubts that this event, as described, really, really happened um, for a number of reasons. Now, the first and probably the weakest reason that I would suggest uh, that I have is with Carl Bau and his associates, the people that he brings on his show, the people that he interviews or features, uh, are very, very prone, much more than your average creationist, to have inflated, exaggerated, or made up academic credentials. Um, so I'm sorry, you know, that doesn't mean he doesn't have a legitimate people on his show ever. I, I don't know. I haven't seen him yet. Um, but either the people he has on claim no degrees, or they claim a degree that is fraud, uh, as far as the ones that I've seen so far. so I And I don't know about Floyd Jones. I don't know if Floyd Jones is an, is an actual doctorate of paleontology. Um, I don't know if he is a doctorate in theology and is claiming paleontology as a field without actually claiming a degree in it. You know, it's really unclear. Um, but one little piece of evidence I have, another piece to to this, is that uh, on his website, which link down below, uh, he has a little mini bio of himself, and the same mini bio is is everywhere you look. So you you put, you know type in the keywords, and you'll find his his bio. And they all say the same thing, which was that he worked as a professional paleontologist geologist uh, before retiring in after 14 years in 1974 uh, to pursue his ministry. That's that's the claim that's made. Uh, so okay, so he had a professional career in paleontology. A presumably this is when he was believing in evolution. I'm assuming, uh, but anyway, he had a professional career as a paleontologist, working with Texaco and Tenneco is what this it says specifically. So you know, I'm assuming oil people, pale, you know, whatever. So you know, and I'm I, I'm going to guess that his bio, his mini bio, is probably accurate, more or less accurate. But the fact that it doesn't say specifically he received a bachelor of science degree from this university he received a master's degree from this university he received a phd from this university um and do you think well you know big deal they don't mention that well the, the reason i say that is whenever you see go to answers in genesis uh look up their personnel look up their list of people and everything like that if the ones that have a degree the ones that have a legitimate degree they give you the year they graduated, the school, the department, the specific degree, and sometimes even a link to the abstract or whatever. I mean, they go out of their way to say, hey, look, he's got a real biochemistry, a PhD in biochemistry. And they tell you when and where he got that degree. So they're, you know, it's it's a feather in their cap that they have legitimate degree people working for them. And most, it seems across the board, that's the creationist pattern. So when you see a, you know, when you see these really vague things like, um, you know, received a higher, you know, received a higher education in this field, from where, what degree, what did he receive, it, you can get a little suspicious about it. Now the third little bit of evidence I have, and again, I can't prove this, you know, I, I'm not sure how much weight this carries, um, but as I'm prone to do because I'm an asshole. I I actually emailed the geology department at the University of Missouri. Um, yes, I emailed them. And guess what? I got a response. I got a response from 
the department from the from the from the, the admin assistant to the chair of the geo, geology department at the University of Missouri and I found out some interesting stuff they've never heard of Floyd Nolan Jones he's never got a degree through them they know they could they, they they don't know he's they say he may have been a student they don't they don't have any way of checking you know whether or not he ever was a student but he certainly never got a degree there he never was a faculty member there and she said she doesn't believe that he was ever offered chair of the paleontology department because they don't have a fucking paleontology department and guess what they never did I asked. I, I sent another email back in response to to, to to the woman, and I said, "Could you please? Is it possible that you know you at one point in time had a paleontology department that then merged, you know, un, you know, under this umbrella, you know, so that maybe in the mid '60s it was a separate department?" And she said, "No." Um, she looked up. She actually looked it up for me, and they've never had a department of paleontology. Isn't that fun? Isn't that interesting? So. My suspicion is that if the University of Missouri Paleontology Department off gave him a degree and or hired him to chair, my guess is that it was this. As opposed to the claims that they're making or the graphic that Carl Bau showed here. And again, I could be wrong. And if anybody knows any information, I would greatly appreciate it. But I don't think... I, I'm, I'm going to call bullshit on this claim. Who were a regional uh, geophysicist. You have yes. taught geology at the university level. Uh, you have taught paleontology at the university level. You're an experienced paleontologist. You've excavated dinosaurs with me, haven't yes, you? Yes, I have. So again, um, here I'm showing an actual screen cap from uh, Dr. Jones's website, where he has his little mini bio, and you'll see you'll see this mini bio everywhere if you search, if you Google his name in connection with any science. And this is the the what comes up. Um, so it, what it appears though is that his professional career is 14 year professional career in the sciences, which is a little short, uh, especially for somebody of his age. But that's just my opinion. Uh, his his professional career all seems to be as an employee of Texaco and Tenneco. Uh, I I'm not sure where in that 14 year period he worked in academia at, in any capacity. So I don't know if he's counting like uh, teaching assistant work as an undergraduate or teaching assistant work as a graduate student and counting that as uh, professorial. I I'm not sure. I don't know. Either way, you can see from here it's pretty. There's not a lot of detail given, so that's all I had to say about that. And uh, you're schooled in invertebrate paleontology as well. And I mentioned at the top of the program, there are no primitive living systems. The trilobites are introduced by the evolutionary community as being a, an early primitive life form. Yet, the eye of the trilobite is incredibly complex. As complex as anything we've ever seen. All right, invertebrate paleontology. I I really love it when I don't know people try to play scientist. It, it especially in my field, it's it makes me laugh. So uh, Carl Bout says that trilobites are not primitive animals as presented by evolutionists. That they're actually complex, um, and there's a certain truth in what he's saying in the sense that in terms of animal phyla, uh, trilobites are complex. You know, arthropods are complex. Uh, polychaete worms are complex. They're, all of these things are more complex than old things like oh, the the Nidarians, this you know, uh, sponges and those groups of organisms. In terms of metazoa, trilobites are complex. So, but they belong in that branch of complex animals, multicellular, active, complex creatures uh, with segmentation and all of these things, these advanced traits. However, we compare things not to the, the whole animal kingdom. We compare things to the groups that they're related to, right? You know, how do trilobites rank compared to other arthropods? Well, it turns out trilobites are by far the most primitive living, or the most primitive arthropod known. Much, much more primitive than any living arthropods today. 
Um, and there's a whole bunch of reasons behind this. There's a whole, I mean, a whole bunch of reasons, a whole bunch of uh, sp specific points that we're looking at. Uh, one of them is the structure of the exoskeleton. Uh, trilobites, the reason they preserve so well um, is because they had a very, very simple exoskeleton compared to living arthropods. Um, it was basically mineralized minerals embedded in a protein matrix um, as opposed that that's really a gross I'm try, if there's any trilobite experts watching they'll like be uh, yeah, don't worry about it, it I, I, I understand that it's more complex than that but compared to a living arthropod exoskeleton which is an incredibly I mean it, it, it's it's this nanotechnology of interwoven proteins and minerals and everything like that I mean it's an amazing structure multi-layered uh, different functions with with a, a whole bunch of different mechanisms that make it flexible and waterproof if needed to be or permeable if needed to be all these different things that a trilobite didn't have uh, the trilobite exoskeleton for example would have probably never worked as a terrestrial could not have lived on land um, modern arthropod diversal most of the other groups of arthropods if not all of the other groups of arthropods have evolved terrestrial representatives because this this advanced exoskeleton design and I mean design in the structural sense not design in the, as in a creator uh, so right there uh, to say that's ridiculous the, the limb of trilobites is extremely primitive the limbs uh, if you look at a trilobite limbs they had serially repeated limbs from their mouth all the way down to their abdominal appendages were all identical um, all multi-branched unspecialized for a particular function with the exception of the antenna and the actual mandibles themselves. Um, living arthropods have antennas and mandibles but also you see a numbers of appendages are accessory mouth parts. They're adapted to, to help chop and grind and capture food. Um, they have things like claws for capturing food. They have um, structures and part, l limbs that are adapted for specifically moving sperm or moving eggs along. They have legs for walking. They have legs for or modified appendages for swimming in some groups. Um, they have some mo modified appendages that only serve as gills. These kinds of this kind of specialization is really what enabled um, arthropods to take off to really become you know grow into their own as the largest phyla a lot around today. Uh, trilobites didn't have that that feature. Now he gets to the eyes. Now this is going to be. I'm trying to keep this short here. Um, that's a ridiculous thing to say. It's it's utterly and totally ridiculous that trilobites are as complex as the eye is as complex as anything we see today that's simply false uh, no arthropod today no arthropod in all the myriad of diversity we don't see an arthropod with an eye as primitive as a trilobites um, now this is going to get kind of I don't want to I'm not going to go into too much detail and I'm going to grossly oversimplify here for those of you who want the detail but a trilobite eye is compound meaning it's multiple facets it's multiple it is you know it is a complex thing I'm not saying it's not complicated it's a beautiful structure you see these electron scanning microscopes and the creationists like to show it next to a fly's eye and go look they're the same when they're nothing alike outside of both being compound the lens of a trilobite was an actual single crystal of calcite okay you know you ever seen calcite you put you put it on a printed text and it makes the text come up to the top you know it's an amazing thing like that um, that that was a trilobite's lens. Modern arthropods have a proteinaceous, a transparent protein lens that serves a wide variety of purpose, can do things that no trilobite eye can do. A good a way I like analogy I like to use as a comparison is think of a trilobite eye as a um, an old sixteenth century just ground lens for an eye as an eyeglass. You know, one size fits all all your eye problems with this one lens. While a modern arthropod eye would be like a soft contact lens where it's adjusted for each specific need and um, sometimes multiple needs within the same thing so that's that is a fair comparison um, it's a stupid thing to say that the trilobite eye is, is is as advanced no arthropod today has an eye as primitive as the trilobites used up all my time talking about arthropods um, as usual so I will go on to part three